Fibrinous Fibrinous See so that? Five. You can add six one or seven one by cremasteric reflex or anal reflex. Okay, but these are superficial reflexes. Okay, and then the deep reflexes include uh, superior jerk or brachial LS reflex. Bicep. What bicep? Tricep. Knee, knee and ankle. Okay, so five deep reflexes. So five superficial and five deep reflexes. Okay. So how you check for that? Yes. So this is supinator or brachial radialis. So this is one. Biceps. Bicep. Bicep. Knee and ankle. These are deep reflexes. Deep tender reflexes. Okay. Superficial. How to check? I will tell you. So superficial as corneal reflex, conjunctival reflex, okay, jaw jerk, abdominal reflex, and Babinski's, okay, and also there is cremasteric and anal reflex as well, okay, these are also superficial. So starting with superficial, take a cotton, okay, small piece of cotton, okay, tell the patient that I will, I will touch your, what is, which, what is corneal? In I wave, this is all I. Where is for me? Uh, white area. This white area is for me. So this transparent, which is just above center part, the whitish or the transparent area, not the whitish. Sorry, transparent area. This is the cornea. Okay. So you check the corneal and conjunctiva reflex by touching the cornea and conjunctiva with a small piece of cotton. This would be a little bit irritating for the patient, so just tell him before checking, okay? So, this is also a part of the examination of the fifth cranial nerve. So I will inshallah tell you when we will do examine the cranial nerve as well. So how you do, take a small piece of cotton and from the, tell the patient that this is what I am going to do. So from the side, just touch the cornea. So what is the normal response? Blinking. 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 Okay. So blinking. The patient will blink. This is normal. This is called corneal. And similarly, you take the conjunctiva. This is the conjunctiva is the inner area, which is all lining area in which you check the pallor as well. So touch with that and the same response, there will be blinking. Okay. Some student, I don't know where they have read in even in our country, it was, they tend to do this by blowing from the side mm. it's absolutely wrong unethical okay for example you are having some infection and you are blowing into the face of the patient this is not acceptable okay so take a piece of cotton or tissue okay make a small edge and from the side not from the front okay from the side just touch the cornea and the patient will blink this is corneal reflex and similarly touch in the conjunctival area and the patient will blink this is conjunctival reflex then jaw jerk ask the patient to slightly open like huh? and here in this part uh, elicit with the hammer or you can place your thumb and then strike it over so normally jaw jerk is absent so this is important other reflexes they are normally present but in normal healthy individual the jaw reflex will be absent if it is present abnormal upper motor neuron lesion of the fifth cranial nerve okay so jaw jerk is normally absent i'm just saying for example the exam in the exam you may not be asked to do the superficial reflexes but you have to tell you may be asked okay for example if you are examining the lower limb motor system so you will not do that okay so got it but you will do the plantar reflex you will do the cremasteric reflex because this is included in the lower limb okay or the abdominal reflex as well even so <coughs> corneal conjunctival jaw jerk then you have any pen uh, what's the abnormal response of jaw uh, jerk normal response no, abnormal, is, abnormal response. is that there will be a reflex there will be a jerk okay when you hit there will be a jerk okay so the contraction of the muscle just like okay so if you don't find that this is normal if you find a jerk Positive jerking, this means this is abnormal. This is a sign of upper motor neuron lesion of the fifth cranial nerve. Okay? Anyone have a pen? Okay. Then comes the abdominal reflexes. So these are this is again superficial. So you make a diamond shape, starting at the level of the umbilicus, 
so how you do that make a diamond from outward go inward what you will see when you do it like this there will be contraction of the muscle okay so make it like this 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 and this so diamond shape from outward to inward and at every point you will see that there is contraction of the muscle this is called abdominal reflex and the root value for this abdominal reflex is t8 to t12 so the thoracic segment 8 till 12 so these reflexes they are elicited if there is intact t8 to t12 level this umbilicus what is the level of umbilicus t10 okay so we see two segment above and two segment below so two t8 to t10 t12 sorry this is abdominal then you can check the babinski's from the lateral side <coughs> scratch this is at time annoying so do tell the patient what you are doing okay or so sometime when you scratch so patient may be a little bit irritable for that so from the lateral side of the foot you scratch and go medially okay what is the normal response there will be fanning there will be fanning which means the toes will move apart and the big toe it will go down so there will be fanning like this and this big toe it will go down so this is the normal response what is abnormal when you scratch this big toe will go up and there will be no fanning okay and sometime it may even be withdrawal okay so patient may withdraw withdraw may be abnormal okay withdraw can also be abnormal but the classical response our positive babinski is when you scratch the toe will go up okay so this is up this is a classical sign of upper motor neuron lesion upper motor neuron lesion okay so these are the superficial reflexes how you check the cremasteric reflex on the medial side of the thigh obviously not done routinely but you scratch on the or tap on the medial side of the thigh on the upper side and you will see a contraction of the cremasteric muscle okay so this is a cremasteric reflex once you are done with that then i'm just focusing on the lower limb for so knee reflex this is the best way to do you just flex both knee and uh, there was pen here <coughs> and from down you your hammer should be this I, I think next time inshallah you have to bring your hammer this will be required in your exam as well so i can repeat it. so you just have a free fall okay so there should be a free fall of your hammer into the patellar tendon okay and what we expect so there will be a jerking okay so this is usual contraction and where you can see the contraction in the quadricep muscle okay so this is the knee reflex okay again on one side and then check it on the other side okay so this is knee reflex if you do it and the patient have a very brisk reflex so this is hyper reflex if you do and you did not find any reflex what is the next thing you will do and you do it you didn't appreciate any jerk no contraction what you will do next until the finished Sometimes people may have because absence of re reflexes you can document because this is something which have maybe due to something serious if there is absent so before you say these are absent you have to make sure that they are actually absent okay so how you will do for example if you check and you did not find any reflex do reinforcement what is reinforcement powerful uh Okay. So you will yes. So you will ask the patient to do like this and approximate or push toward pull other side. Okay, like this. Okay. So tell the patient to do it like this and then say that do it when I will say. So place it and before checking the uh, reflex, ask him to. Press okay, and then at the same time. Yes. So when he is pressing, 
then check again. So this is called reinforcement. Okay. So if you still did not find any reflex, this will mean this is absent. So before commenting that the reflex is absent, check for reinforcement. Okay, reinforcement should be done right. So now after the ankle reflex, then comes the knee reflex. Okay, so you do the knee reflex by putting the patient, for example, if this is a patient, so you just flex and rotate it like this. Okay, so I have done it here like this and slightly extend the foot. This is the patellar tendon, oh, sorry, Achilles tendon. Okay, feel it and then tap over it. Okay, so you will see a contraction and also on the foot you will see that this is, so this is how you check the ankle reflex. Okay, if the, the, the command is only to examine the lower limb, Still, you have to screen the upper limb. For example, if I if I, I have given the example of a patient having a case of paraplegia, lower limb weakness, you have done this, but also at the same time you have to screen the upper limb. Okay, so I'll tell. So I am not moving to the upper limb. I will come at at the end. So what component we have done in the motor system? Bulk and nutrition. So power, so power, power reflexive, right? No. Huh? Okay. So now next step is if the patient can move, ask him to stand and move and check for the gait. Okay. So there are certain types of gait. For example, the paraplegic gait or the hemiplegic gait or the scissoring gait or the waddling gait. Okay. So th this is something which when the patient will walk, I think Dr. Hafiz will show you videos of the gait as well. This could also be included in the. And after that, you can check the signs of meningeal irritation. Okay. Signs of Manager irritation, what are those? Ask the patient to relax the neck and touch it the front of the sternum with the chin like this. Okay, so this is called neck rigidity or neck stiffness. Okay. Also, when you are doing it like this, also see if the legs flex abnormally. Okay, so you will flex the uh, the patient will flex with the help of you. For example, you are doing it like this and see if there is any abnormal contraction. So this is called turning sign. Okay, and what is the Brodinsky sign? By So you will alleviate and the patient will have pain in the back. In the gap. Yes. Yes, so in the back area and in the posterior thigh. Okay, so this area will be very stiff and painful. These are the signs of meningeal irritation. Now, I just after this, just screen the patient for upper limb. Ask the patient to raise the hand. This will tell you whether the patient only have paraplegia or quadriplegia. Okay. So once finished with that, ask the patient to raise the hand. This will tell you don't need to check all the things in the upper limb if the command is only the lower limb. So just screen. Okay. Screen it. How? What are the reflexes which you check in the upper limb? This is the supinator, this side, okay, the supinator reflex or brachioradialis. So, <coughs> this is the tendon, so you will uh, tap on the tendon, okay. So, this is the brachioradialis or supinator reflex. Then, this tendon here, it is the tendon for the biceps. So, you can place your thumb over that tendon and strike it with hammer and you will have a flexion of the, uh, the forearm, okay. And then from the back, biceps. this is the area for the tricep just above the elbow joint and you will tap on that and the patient will have it. Yes, so exception. In the biceps tendon, we place the thumb. thumb over the bicep tendon. You will place the thumb over the bicep tendon and then here. Yeah. So this is the tendon. So just place the thumb like this and tap on the thumb and you will have a flexion of the Forearm, okay, so this is about the reflex. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, these are the components of the motor system, and this is important when you are checking the motor system again. Bulk and nutrition, tone, power, reflexes, gait, signs of irritation, and screening of the upper. Okay, so this is how you check for the 
any question about the motor system